Hello and welcome to Racers Now. Now this could be a short video because Constitution Hill is 1-3 to three to win the Champion Hurdle 2024 at the Cheltenham Festival. Last year's winner, 8 from 8 over hurdles in his lifetime. Already a two-time Cheltenham Festival winner. Some say the best hurdler we've seen this century and they could well be right. It's nine weeks from the race and the straight forecast for the race is already odds on. Constitution Hill is 1 to 3 in the win market and last year's second state man is 4 to 1. So yeah, the uh, it's pretty pretty boring from a betting perspective given that the the straight forecast is pretty much already odds on. It's 12 to 1 bar those two. There's 22 entries at this stage which is probably more than was expected uh, when the when the uh, most recent entry stage were made around the 8th of January and um yeah there won't be anywhere near that number of runners on the day, let's have it right. Nearly all of the current entries of the 22 have other options at the festival, many of them in handicaps actually, um, speculative entries you could call them, just in case Nicky Henderson does his well practice disappearing act with one of his best horses. And whilst we're on Nicky Henderson and we've got a little bit of time to fill given that Constitution Hill is 1-3, to three, let's have a, just a quick uh, recap of Nicky Henderson and Constitution Hill in the last year or so. In April 2023, after Aintree winning the Grade 1 at Aintree, Nicky says they might go to Punchestown with Constitution Hill. Well, they lost their passport. In May 23, he said we might run up Royal Ascot and play have a play around with the Flat Boys. Well, that never, never got anywhere near happening and he lost his top hat. July 23, we fancy going over fences with Constitution Hill. But apparently... He, won't, he wouldn't stay the Gold Cup trip, so that's been inevitably ruled out. I mean, why you can't have a chaser go for the champ, go for the champion chase rather than the Gold Cup, I don't know. But they flirted with fences. It was obvious it wasn't going to happen. 101 landed. 2nd of December 2023, the new flat season's underway. The fighting fifth meeting at Newcastle, unfortunately, gets abandoned. Constitution Hill was an intended runner in that. The race got rearranged at Sandown a week later on the night. And the heavy ground apparently was too close to Boxing Day, despite Constitution Hill having won at Sandown on heavy ground earlier in his career, about 18 months before, actually. Uh, so, yeah, apparently the 9th of December is too close to the 26th of December. He goes and wins on Boxing Day, looking as good as ever at 1-12 to in the Christmas hurdle. Now, to top it all off, and the worse it gets, apparently... January the 27th at Cheltenham is now too close to the Cheltenham Festival, which is approximately six weeks later. I mean, come on. Come on, Nicky. It is all very, very boring. It really is. Now, of course, I have never trained a horse in my life. But the biggest problem for me is when Henderson connects the running of his horses to welfare. That's the big issue to me. There's a lot of external forces at the moment in and around and commentating on racing from afar talking about welfare, whether that be horses falling and getting injured or that be horses being tapped with the pro cush. And when Nicky Henderson is uh, connecting heavy ground to the welfare of horses, that's where I have a big, big problem. We are shooting ourselves in the foot from within. And he is a former champ multiple time champion trainer and trainer some of the best horses we've seen uh, for years and years and years. I am dead against that when he connects welfare with uh, going descriptions and heavy ground and running twice within a week or what or whatever there's nothing wrong with running horses on heavy ground some her horses just perform better on different grounds and have different preferences that's fine and re like i said earlier remembering that constitution hill has won on heavy ground before at sandown in january anyway the moan is over when constitution hill does run on the track he is pretty scintillating and pretty much unbeatable as the anti-post market currently suggests. Is there an anti-post each way bet, you ask? The answer is no, and it's for two reasons. Firstly, other than, say, the favourite, state man, and potentially not so sleepy, we've, we haven't really got any idea who's going to line up, and there might not be many runners at all. Remember, there was only six runners in the Christmas hurdle. Um, it would be difficult to, to, to see there being double-figure runners in the champion hurdle on the day in March 2024. And as mentioned at the top of the, the video, nearly all of the current 22 entrants have other more likely festival options. I'll be waiting for the final decks with a view to having a look at the without the favourite market, maybe without the first and second favourite markets. And I'll get this final point in twice, in two separate videos. I think Empire Pass 
current 12 to 1 third favourite will not run in this race and instead go for the Stayers Hurdle. I said this on races now months ago and I stick by it. He has been as big as 22, 24 to, on the exchange for the um, Stayers Hurdle and I think that's where he will go and he'll be a very interesting contender if he does go there. But as you may have gathered, the champion hurdle is all about one horse and that is Constitution Hill.